Welcome to episode two of Tristan. So today is Saturday, the 9th of January, 2021. It's absolutely hammering down rain outside. What I thought I would do is instead of going out for a bike ride, I thought I'd do a bit of a review of my Bell gravel bike, something that I really love and it's something that I wanna leap into and talk more about. Just a quick one, as you can see, I've stepped up my production quality this week. Last week I filmed entirely on my iPhone. The first little trailer that you saw on the Tristan Take video episode zero, that was actually filmed and edited on my phone. This week what I thought I'd do is pull out the bigger camera and the microphone and some lights. If you like what you see, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to hit the notification bell, you can do that as well, that'd be cool. With all that being said, let's launch into episode two. My video this week is just to look at my Bell gravel bike. We sell a lot of Bell gravel bikes through the service course. We sell a lot of Bells in general through the service course. It's been handmade in Barcelona by Enrico Maria Belle, who makes Belle cycles. He's a real artisan. He has a real passion for crafting and for welding and for making things. He also is a cyclist and so he kind of melded his passions together to create his own brand. And the beautiful thing about getting a custom bike is that you can really speak with the builder and you can really get exactly what you want. You don't just buy something straight off the shelf and go, well, I've got to put up with its flaws. You can work those out in the way that the geometry is designed. The top tube length suits you. For me, I have a quite long arms and then I have quite short legs. My saddle height's only 685 mils. So Kiko designed the geometry of the frame around my size. So the other thing I asked for was a bike that I could do some bike packing with. I actually got into the Atlas Mountain Race, which was then postponed, so it's not on until October, but this is a bike that I might potentially do the Atlas Mountain Race on. I've got to do a lot more riding on it before I decide. I might end up on a mountain bike, but it's something that I want to learn to do multiple day rides with. Let's jump into the details of the bike. The frame is hand welded by Kiko in his Barcelona workshop, made out of Columbus steel. It's got an integrated carbon NV seat post. The carbon has been bonded into the steel frame, so it's a mix of carbon and steel. It's got an NV G fork, which has been designed specifically for gravel riding. So this fork can fit a 650 up to 52 C tire, or it can fit a 700 up to 47 mil tire. One thing I will mention is that the, the frame is actually a prototype. So this is not a frame that Kiko makes direct for the customers yet. This is something that he and I discussed a long time ago when I said I really like the idea of having an integrated seat mast just for how clean it keeps the frame. He was like, I'm working on something. He got back to me and he said, I'm gonna make a prototype frame. You're gonna get one, I'm gonna get one. We're gonna ride them. We're gonna see how they feel on the road and on the gravel, and then we can make changes for future models. That's why my frame has number zero one on it, and Kiko's frame has number zero zero on it. So the bike has a T47 bottom bracket in it. It's got some beautiful curved seat stays. Other details on the frame are the hammered head tube badge that looks slightly worn. He's got a small bell logo on the bottom of the seat stay, which is just a beautiful little touch. And for me, he put a special graphic on the down tube, which is the Gra ISP01 logo. <music> One of the things about the integrated seat mast is you don't run a regular seat post. So I'm running a Bastion Cycles 3D printed titanium seat mast topper. Bastion Cycles are a Melbourne based bicycle brand. They make frames out of a mix of carbon and 3D printed titanium. And now they're starting to third party manufacture parts for other bike brands. It's polished titanium. So I went to Kiko and I said, is that an option? And he said, yep, look, let's do that for your bike. And so that's the seat mast topper you see on the bike. It sits on top of the carbon integrated seat mast and for this reason, the sizing of the bike has to be absolutely spot on because there's only about 10 mils of movement within that and it just completes the look of the frame really, really nicely. So moving on to the paint, 
let's talk about the paintwork. The paint job was done by Killian Ramirez. He is a Barcelona-based painter. He paints bike frames for Kiko, motorcycle helmets, and he paints other parts of motorcycles. I've seen enough bells come through the service course that I was confident that Killian would do a really good job no matter what I asked for. As it happened, I was pretty open to working with Kiko and Killian on the paint, and I sent them a couple of photos of what I wanted, which was a desert and landscape inspired paint job. And then I said, you know what, you guys have free reign, creative license. I want you guys to go out there and do what you think is gonna look incredible for such a unique frame. He then designed up a paint job. He passed the paint job graphic onto Killian and Killian had to find a way to execute it. As you'll see when you look at the close up details of the bike, there's a lot of sand going on. There's a lot of earthy textures going on. I don't actually know how Killian did it. He's an absolute master with an airbrush. He somehow figured out a technique to get this really sandy kind of look. So it looks like there's sand actually underneath the clear coat. So the great thing about the paint job was that it was a complete surprise for me. I had given them the, the images and given them creative license and it wasn't until the frame arrived in the service course that I got to see the graphic for the first time. And one of the great things about this style of paint job is that you can go out, you can ride it on the gravel, it can get covered in mud, it can get covered in dirt, and you know what, it never looks dirty. So moving on to the group set, I'm running a Shimano GRX Di2 electronic group set with a one by setup. I run Di2 on my road bike and I think it just performs amazingly. When I was thinking about a gravel bike and I was thinking about what I was gonna build it up with, Di2 was just the obvious choice for me. What I love about GRX as a gravel group set is the way the levers and the shifters are hooked. So the hooked nature of the hoods means that when you're descending, you can really lock yourself into the bars. I'm running a one by setup with an 1146 cassette on the rear and I'm running a 40 tooth chain ring on the front. I find that this combination is enough to pretty much get me up any wall that I need to get up. It's a little bit slow on the road, that's the only thing. It's definitely designed for off-road riding at that size. If I was doing any more long distance riding on the road or on gravel, I would run a slightly bigger chain ring on the front just to give myself a bit more roll out on the road. As you can see, I'm not running the standard GRX cranks that come with the group set. I'm running an Ingrid Components crank set. So Ingrid are an Italian brand, and the reason I chose them is because they're a little bit lighter, and I think they look much better than the GRX cranks. Paired with the crank set is the Ingrid 40 tooth front chain ring. So I run 170 mil cranks on the gravel. On the road, I actually run 165 mil cranks because of how short my legs are, and I really find that helps keep my cadence up, and I can keep the power down on the road where you need really consistent consistent power. Off-road, what I like about the slightly longer cranks are that you get a little bit more leverage when it's really steep. As far as wheels go, I'm running Mavic All-Road Pro 650B Carbon SL wheels. They've got an internal diameter of 26 millimeters, so they're super nice and wide, they're pretty comfortable, and they're running on some Mavic hubs. I've got a set of Pirelli Cinturato 650 by 45 mil tires on there. These are the M model, so the M model is for mixed terrain. Personally, I haven't loved the tires. I've got them on there just to test them out. They're not my final choice. They're a good option, they're not a great option, but I haven't found them terrible. I've got them set up tubeless, so they're nice and comfortable. They do have pretty good rolling speed, but they don't have as much grip as I think I'd probably like. As far as the saddle, I'm running a fabric scoop with titanium rails. The titanium rails are a little bit stronger for off-road riding, so if you really hit down hard on the saddle going over an unexpected bump, you're not gonna crack your carbon rails. The last thing you want is to be out in the middle of nowhere and to hit a really hard bump and to crack your saddle rail. So you wanna make sure longevity is a big part of what you look for when you're buying a saddle for your gravel bike. Handlebars, I'm running the Envy Compact Road Handlebars. They're 42 centimeters wide. Envy make great handlebars and I run them on my road bike as well. I've run the aero bars on my road bike and I've also run the compact road bars on my road bike. They're a pretty solid bar. They're round on the top so you've got some good grip for when you're climbing. I have been considering going for something slightly wider, maybe out to 44 because the bars don't have any flare down the bottom. So you're kind of limited to the width that you can get. A slightly wider bar is gonna offer a little bit more handling and stability, especially on fast or rocky technical downhills. If you've got any thoughts on that, just let me know in the comments because I'd really like to know what people have experience with. On the bars, I'm running the Envy Bar Tape. It's quite a new product. It's actually super, super comfortable and I highly recommend it. Handlebar tape is pretty important, especially if you're doing really long rides. It's important not only to run something that's comfortable, but something that's got plenty of grip. One last thing on the bike, I'm running a Rundle or Arundel mandible carbon bottle cages. They're a pretty grippy bottle cage. I've never had any issues. I've never lost a bottle on the road or on the gravel bike. They're probably a bit more expensive than going for a regular cheap 
steel cage, but for me, I'm pretty happy with them. Never lost a bottle, that's the main thing. And yeah, that's the complete bike. I hope you enjoyed that. It's probably time I get out for a ride on the thing. It's nice and clean and it doesn't deserve to stay that way. If you wanna see more photos, you can jump over to my Instagram. You can also have a look on the Bell Cycles Instagram as well for more photos of his beautiful bikes. If you wanna watch a video on Kiko that we made back in about March, check out this link here. I'm gonna put the video up so you can see all about Kiko as a person. We made this through the service course. Matt Tomlinson made the film. I shot some still photos for it. If you wanna see more videos like this, just drop a comment down below. Or if you wanna see anything else, just hit me in the comments as well. I'm really open to learning about what I can show people that they might be interested in. So with all that being said, I guess I'll see you in episode three and uh, have a great week. Ciao.